Yeah, good morning, dear friends. Uh, this is Oli Shengwito from IPRS Kigali. So, today we have a situation uh, having three cylinders. It's actually a machine that has got a uh, clamping device, a stamping device, and uh, an ejecting device. So, uh, we have the cylinder M1 to clamp, the cylinder M2 to stamp, and finally, the cylinder M3 to eject the stamped workpiece from the, from the system. So let's start with M1 and we're going to analyze together. So it goes for clamping. After clamping, the M2 goes for stamping. After stamping, it, it goes back to initial position and the M1 also goes to initial position and finally the M3 goes for ejecting the workpiece from the from the, the line. So this is the sequence operation where how they, they are actually going from zero to one uh, to one or to two here this is extension for the first cylinder and then it, it, it start to clamp from two to four but while it start to clamp the cylinder two goes for stamping and immediately return back after returning back the cylinder one now start to go back to initial position and finally the cylinder three uh we now go for ejecting the workpiece from the from the system so uh, this is how the this is the sequences the way that they, they are doing their job so so let us try to turn this sequence into an sfc program using automation studio so uh remember sfc it is a sequential function chart it's one among the five languages that a PLC might be programmed in. So, uh, with uh, this sequence, C1 plus C2 plus C2 negative times N, C1 negative, C3 plus C3 negative, we are going to control our stamping machine. Uh, with uh, C1 plus, it stands for the first cylinder which goes in ex extension because when you say plus it is positive stroke it is extension and when you say negative it is negative stroke which means retraction for instance let's control this c1 and when we, we, we control manually here we might say c1 plus and when you control here you can say c1 negative so as you can see each direction of control valve has got two solenoids two solenoids and uh, it has got also two positions and each cylinder has got the has got the, the sensors for instance when we are on this uh on this actuator or double acting cylinder we have one s1 i mean the first sensor on the first uh, cylinder when you say one s2 it is the second cylinder on the first uh, the second sensor on the first cylinder and so on as well as the solenoids, we have 1Q1, 1Q2, uh, we have 2Q1, 2Q2. So we have on and off to turn on the machine and turn off the machine. So let's start, let's get started with the control, just turn on and off the machine. So we need to go to the library and then we click, uh, we go, we click on the SFC and then we pick the first. Uh, we pick the first step and uh, what do we have here it's just to turn on the machine let's say like a uh, start you can call it start you can just call it start and uh, the transition from this we want to call it just on on like that the next step is to turn off the machine so the action to be done here let's call it uh, stop like stop we need, we need to to emergently stop the machine and the transition here to allow this step uh, it will be uh, let us call it off so with on we are just representing this switch with off we are representing that switch it's time now to link we link from this to the initial and if we try to turn to simulate you press here 
uh, so so far we don't have an initial we have to set this as an initial we always need to have an initial so if we simulate once again you know initially we have got value so when we press start we are here it's like we are running the machine and when we step or we press stop it's like we are stopping the machine now let's now build the program combining all of this information from the sensors and the output element like a solenoid so remember the first step must be initial step so here we go it is initial step even if it is step number three but it's initial for the program and uh, always we need to move from step pass through the transition it's also transition three and let's call it stop since we need to stop the system in the modern situation and remember this stop is standing for this one or that one so the next step which is the, the step number four it's where now we need it, it, we need now to run the program we were going to start with one q1 uh, the action to be done here it is it is be it is going to be one q1 and this one q1 it means we are going to energize the first solenoid to make the piston one to slide and uh, let's say the situation that we have here we can just call it in to mean initial it's not a big deal and what happens when one q1 is energized it will change the position here and the fluid will force the piston to slide along the cylinder and it will be seen by this sensor 1s2 which means it is our guy this is the second transition it is 1s2 1s2 and when we reach the 1s2 the 1s2 is going to allow another solenoid to be energized and the second solenoid to be energized will be this one the 2q1 so we say the step here uh, which is the step 5 the action to be done here it is going to be 2q1 2q1 like this so when we are at 2q1 again we're going to force we're going to change the position and this will cause the piston to slide along the cylinder and it is going to be seen by the sensor 2s2 it means it is our transition so it is 2s2 2s2 it is the next transition and here we are going to another step so what happened when you go here on 2s2 it's time now to retract back the first cylinder for the stamping operation it means we are now stamping after stamping we need to to go back and then that, that cylinder will continue so we are now going to finish to finish to stamp it means when you are at s uh, 2s2 this information is going to be used in order to re, to retract back uh, the, this c2 so we are going to put another step which is step number six and the action to be done here it must be uh, it must be 2q2 they call it 2q2 uh, the 2q2 is the one which is going to cause this this so this piston to to go back and when it goes back it is going to to be seen by the sensor 2s1 which is our transition uh, 2s1 and this transition is going to be used to change the position here it means our second step is 1q2 so let's put 1q2 uh, the action it is going to be 1q2 1q2 for example this and once we are at 1q2 this will cause the piston to go back and when the piston goes back to the initial position it will be seen by this sensor 1s2 so it is our second transition 1s1 uh, one, which is this sensor it is going to be seen by this sensor it is uh, 1s1 and uh, this 1s1 is going to, to allow this cylinder to extend it means our second uh, our next step our next step it is going to be uh, 
for 3q1 3q1 which means it's now time to extend uh, the third cylinder and once it goes it will it will be seen by the sensor uh, 3s2 so it's a 3s2 and um, when it is it is seen by 3s2 this is going to cause to change the position here which means the sec the next step the next step which is the that step uh, it is going to be uh, for changing back the position and this time it is 3 q2 to change the position and um, finally when to change the position it is going to come back to initial position and the sec the next transition here it's gonna be uh, 3s1 and uh, actually it's time now to link uh, it is we are done it's time to link from this transition to the initial one like that and let's simulate to see what comes out so when we turn on you can see that this our system is running this is for stamping operation let's try to animate this the cylinders so these are the cylinder the way the cylinder are moving so it's very simple What's matter is just to understand the way the steps are following one another, one another, and so on.